Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're back out on Chickamauga and we are going fishing. We're continuing to break down the lake. Today I've got the deck of the boat loaded up with swim baits, top water, and soft jerk baits. Let's go catch some fish. So the theme today, guys, is going to be downsized baits. I've noticed the last couple days out here that the bait fish that these bass are eating are tiny, inch, inch and a half long. It's just time of year. That's what's up in the shallows right now. So even though we're catching fish on all sorts of things, none of it's really a perfect match for what they're actually eating. So this is the smaller shower blows, the downsized top water, the smallest one they make. I've got some little Kitex tied on, on an underspin, on a screw head. I've got a nose hooked fluke on a spinning rod. Not the things that you would think for the Tennessee River but I really want to match that size of that bait fish and see if it makes a difference. We'll know soon enough. They're busting right here next to the boat. Guys, I'm, I'm downsized in my presentation. Little hooks, light line, but I'm still hooking these fish in grass. That was a three pounder, but I'm pulling on them as hard as I can and I'm pulling these treble hooks out of them. I may have to adapt here, we'll see. All right, we're on the board. I want to eat a 3-3 Kitek on a flashy swimmer. And totally downsized from what we've been throwing. I'm throwing this on a 6-10 medium, my jerk bait rod. Little tiny flashy swimmer hook, but they're eating it. <laughs> oh, they're busting right there. Let's get back in there. Oh, too much fun. 
you know, I did not see myself immediately throwing a spinning rod out here on the Tennessee River. But you need to know what the options are. You've got to try. That was on a nose hooked fluke. Essentially the banjo minnow rig. Not even the standard fluke. Normally I do this with a super, well I shouldn't say standard. Normally I do this with a super fluke. This is the standard fluke, that smaller size. I've downsized everything today. It's about, I'm confident I'm gonna get a lot of bites. It's up, hang on. I'm confident that I'll get a lot of bites. It's a 50-50 whether or not the fish are going to get smaller with the smaller bait. Sometimes going to that smaller bait will get you a smaller bite. Sometimes the fact that you're matching the hatch overshadows that and you can get a quality bite. We just don't know until we try. Another smaller fish, but I'll take them. It is amazing how they all get hooked so well on that nose hook fluke. Come on. Right in the roof. A lot of times it's in the back right in the roof. It's very consistent. They eat that hook, or they eat that fluke head first every single time. He ate the spark shad on a screw head. Totally different look and presentation. Man, it works. <laughs> Look where that screw head is. You think he wanted that thing? Oh man, all the way down. Awesome. Let's do this with pliers instead of getting a hook in my hand. <laughs> All right, while we've got a brief lull in the action, 
I wanted to explain the baits I'm throwing and again why I'm doing it. Uh, the first one here is that fluke. You know, a fluke is an incredibly deadly bait, but this is that smaller sized fluke, number two hook on eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And I'm fishing it fast and aggressive, half above water, half underwater, over the tops of grass. Those fish are just coming up eating that thing. When I've tried a super fluke, the standard size that I like to throw, uh, the fish were just missing it. See, the bait fish that they're eating are only about this big. So this is much, much closer to what they're eating. The second bait is that smaller top water. Let me show you that and then we'll get to the swim baits because there's something there I really want to show you. This is the shower blows, but it's the little tiny guy. The standard one that you guys see us throwing in videos is like this long and quite a bit bigger around. It's a much, much smaller bait. Now I stuck with the shower blows because they're chasing shad. And when they're chasing shad, everything is chaotic. The shad are really uh, just flying around, trying to get away. They dart, they move, they don't run in a straight line. They're really aggressive as they try to escape. So I wanted a shower blows because it turns really hard and it throws a lot of water, makes a lot of commotion as it's walking but I wanted that small size to try and better match what's going on out here and that is definitely working. Now the swim baits, this is what I wanted to key in on. I brought a 2.8 on a guppy head but I knew even as I was tying it on that I would never throw it. And here's why, and I want you guys to try and apply this to your fishing. You know, because we've talked about this quite a few times, that when these fish are keyed in on bait, flashes everything. Watercolor is also a factor. So here on the river, I'm seeing anywhere from, let's say six inches to two and a half feet of visibility today. It's not really, really clear water. That little 2.8 is an incredible bait. It gets big, big bites, but its drawing power is limited, meaning you have to get it fairly close to a fish for a fish to be willing to come and eat it unless you're in crystal clear water. In crystal clear water, there are times where those fish will come incredible distances to get them. So I knew I wanted to be throwing a small swim bait. That's a given, these fish are eating bait fish. It's early fall. We've had a handful of cooler evenings already. They're schooling up. You can see these fish are busting on bait. Need to be throwing a swim bait. But that 2.8 with this watercolor, especially around bait fish, its drawing power goes to almost zero. So this is the 3.3, just one size up in the Kitek. But I put it with an underspin. Now this is that small flashy swimmer. Uh, because I wanted weedless because I'm fishing over and around grass bed. So I went one weedless, one knot, and we'll get to that. Um, but that smallest one knot size of the flashy swimmer. And then notice it is not skin hooked. I leave the hook point exposed and I bent it out ever so slightly so that when everything is pulled tight, that hook point, if I just run my finger along, it skin hooks. That is critical. With a smaller hook size, especially with lighter line, sometimes you just won't get the hook in them. If you bend that hook out ever so slightly and you don't bother skin hooking, when that fish comes along, he'll get the hook point every time. And again, that blade takes the distance that a fish is willing to come and increases it dramatically. And also the flash coming from that blade helps you stand out even when they're busting on bait if you get that thing in there they'll veer off the bait fish when they see that flash and come right in and eat it then the last one is that spark shad and that again is on that screw head so a lot of you guys are familiar with this because we throw it a lot for smallmouth 
but that screw head is a destabilized head. The blade is smaller on one side than it is on the other. So it puts a ton of wobble out. So as you reel this through the water, it's almost like a finesse natural spy bait. That screw is up there spinning, but because they're different sizes, and this is the only one I've seen like this. This is the Mega Bass head. There's a handful of screw heads out there. This is the only one that I've seen that's destabilized like this. It creates a lot more commotion in the water. And then that little swim bait back there, kicking along, just gets them. They just eat it. So again, added flash, added vibration is key to stand out around these bait fish. And it's also key to stand out in that murkier water. Whether you're on the Tennessee River or you're a pond fisherman or you're in a reservoir somewhere, it really doesn't matter. If that water clarity comes down a little bit, key in on those bladed hooks. It doesn't matter which style, try them all. You'll find the one that seems to work the best with your fish, but key in on those blades and you will get more bites. Also with these, because they are lighter hooks, you can go to a lot lighter line. I'm noticing right now mine is nicked up and needs to be retied, but you can go to a lot lighter line. This is that, I want to say it's a 32nd ounce head. It might be a 16th ounce head. Maybe it's a 16th. I will look it up. By the time you can read the video description, I will have the correct size linked for you, but it is the lightest version of that head. It's really, really lightweight. I think it's a 16th as I say that out loud, but you can fish it incredibly slow around the edges of these grass beds. And these fish have never seen anything like this. This river system is not known for finesse. It's known for power fishing, but they will definitely eat finesse. It remains to be seen if a big one will eat it. Today was just reaching out, trying different things, checking the extremes. We'll see if we can get some more bites here. Maybe we'll get a big one. But today I just wanted to know that yes, they will eat it. It's going to take us time as we break down this fishery to get dialed in on big, big ones. But for now it's working. Let's try and catch some more. I've got one on, but he's buried in the grass. He doesn't look very big. Oh, he's gonna be mad when I get that grass off his face. All right, all right, all right. That one is fired up. Come here. Ate that flashy swimmer again. Nice one. Awesome. Guys, I backed out just a little deeper. Saw some fish down on the electronics. Dropped a jackal tail spinner down there. And got a good one. It's on that one ounce tail spin just as soon as it hit the bottom. Let's see if we can get bit again.
another one on the tail spinner. You know, I'm sitting out in 20, 25 feet of water, but I stayed with that downsized presentation. You know, I could be out here throwing a 10XD or big jig or a big worm or big swim bait, but I wanted to continue to see what that small profile would do. It's definitely working. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hopefully it was educational. We did not catch the biggest fish in the lake today, but we had to know whether or not that was going to work, whether or not downsizing was worth it as an option out here. It definitely is worth doing. That at the end got to where I could almost call those shots. If I saw a fish break, if I saw bait start to get nervous and I put one of those small swim baits in there, I was getting bit. I didn't hook all of them because I was on light line across a big distance in that grass, but I would get bit every single time. That was very, very telling. I think on a different day, different school of fish, we might get into some big ones. Hopefully you can take that and apply it to your own water as well. Don't be afraid to downsize. Remember to add some flash. I'll link all the baits and the gear that I was using down in the video description. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.